Hello everybody and welcome back to Train Sim World. And as you can see, we are obviously in Train Sim World. We're going to be driving the Tees Valley route and we are going to be taking the brand new DTG Class 31 for a spin. This is the scenario we're going to be doing. A uh, cement circle description take a take part in a perpetual cycle of loaded and unloaded trains flowing between Eastgate Cement Works and Tees Yard. Trains involved Class 31 Dash one blah. Now I don't know if this is a glitch or if this is a sorry a typing error. I mean, <laughs> but <laughs> I can't get over that. <laughs> Class thirty one dash one blah. I don't know if it, I don't know if it's a um if it's sort of shortened on purpose. B L G um R F. Mm, it could be. It just seems a bit odd. It's obviously it's obviously the um the name of the cop of the vehicle we're going to actually be driving sort of thing so anyway let's uh let's jump straight into this uh and while the game's loading i will say that this isn't my first look my first look was yesterday when i recorded a video however the video decided it would corrupt itself so i'm having to re-record this obviously on the day after release friday uh so that's why there's a bit of a delay in this video coming out but nonetheless we'll have a look around uh, we'll have a look at, uh, look at the local and see what we can see. First of all, one thing I've, I noticed yesterday. Why? Look at the look at the info panel, right? Class thirty one dash one, and look at the number. Thirty one three one one. Hmm. Yes, DTG. That's how numbers work. Hmm. Uh, it may be, it may be intentional. I don't know. I'm not a uh, an expert on 31s. Maybe there were like 300 odd, 30, 200 odd 31 dash ones, and they had to go into threes, or maybe they've just made a mistake in putting these numbers in. But nonetheless, we have this loco. First impressions, it is beautiful. Look at that, and I have a, uh, I have a screenshot which will probably become the th the uh, become the thumbnail of uh, of the video. Uh, taken from yesterday, from pretty much this, this, uh, this place here, but it's just lovely looking. You, you, it really is. You can't fault the initial impression that this loco gives off. It's, it's incredible. It's amazing. Right, let's have a closer look at the detail while we're down on the track. Oh, hello. We'll use the 31 as our protection, I think. There we go. So yeah, right. Uh, air brake fitted. Yeah, buff knocks on the buffers. Uh, buffer beam. Yeah. Yeah, it's all there. It's all there. Look, it all looks to be there at least. So good. Nice amount of weathering. I like the glow from the from the lamps as well. To be honest. Let me hang on. Let me stick the tails off. I've not actually seen the tails yet. Oh yeah, and this is quite cool. The animation when you walk up the stairs, rather than just sort of flying up the stairs as you do with most of the locos. You sort of actually climb this one. Uh, the wagons are alright. They've usually got the animation, but often the, um, the the stairs onto the locos don't seem to have much of an animation. So it's nice to see that they've put that in. I like that. That looks that looks quite nice. That's quite pretty with them lights. Uh, yeah, the weathering is good. The weathering is very good. Especially the fact that if you look at the, the info plate, it's all sort of chipped away. And also, we run down to the VR logo. You can see that that's not that's not a perfect transfer either. That's been uh, been weathered over time. One thing I would say is, in certain places, you can see the pixelation, like on there around the door. You can see that this is actually a texture and not a real train. But at the same time, there isn't a lot they can do about that. Uh, so you've got to forgive him for that, to be honest. It, 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 it at sort of a distance, it, it's not noticeable really. So yeah, really up close. If you look really carefully, it does look a bit Minecrafty, if you will. Um, it's hard to see because of that blooming tree, but we've got all the a lot of uh, information, a lot of detail down here. Uh, I've not been able to find any breaks yet uh, because there's so much bogey. Uh, these panels do not open. We have a fuel cap, fuel filler cap in there somewhere. There we go. A 
knew I had it. Uh, where's the light? It's L, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, look, I, I didn't even think of doing that yesterday when I was trying to record the video. Oh, it's in there, is it? Oh, okay. I thought it was on the side of this box for some reason. I mean, I don't know why it would be there, but that's got to be... Is that blue? Oh, that's the standard there. You know, it's back. Is there a break? There's the break. Leaf spring suspension. Uh, coils as well. Not bad. Not bad looking, I must admit. All the pipe work and everything. Uh, brake cylinders. I believe that looks like a brake cylinder to me. That looks like a sandbox, however. Can't feel the sandboxes. And what's this thing for? This thing. I'm guessing it's if there's like a piece of ballast on the track, it just the train will just knock it off the off the track. But maybe not. I might be wrong there. So if if you know, sort of give me a comment because there's there's quite interesting these little bits how they how they stick off. Uh, let's stand up properly. Coupling, everything works fine. You can't squeeze between these, which is a bit of a nuisance. I like these though. The hangers for the prop, the pipes that hang there when the pipes are idle. Actually, we need to check that. Is the oh, crouch on? Are they on the? They're not on them. That is a nuisance. I would have wanted to see ideally them pipes hanging onto them, onto them. Uh, I didn't notice them yesterday actually. Anyway, let's get in the let's get in the cab then. We'll have a look at the wagons in a minute. We'll close the door. And I'll show you around the cab. So as you would have seen earlier, we have all of our our um, lights here. We'll turn the tail lights off. Um, route indicator is obviously the two up the top. This box can't be opened from what I found, which is a bit of a nuisance. I know it's a domino anyway, but it would have been nice if we could have opened it and changed it. Or even if the functionality wasn't there to change it. They could always build a new 31 in the future and have it with a changeable destination block. Oh, sorry, head code line, I mean. Um, also, we got a cab light. Lovely cab light. Vent there as well. Vent. Oh, you can't open and close the vent. I wouldn't expect it to be open. But. Engine room light does absolutely nothing. Trust me, I've had a look long and hard at the outside of this thing, and nothing occurs. You cannot enter the engine room either, which is highly a nuisance. See, it doesn't work, but whatever. Um, so we'll turn that off for now. Handbrake. As you would expect, pretty nice. Say door don't work. Brake selector, compressor changeover, and battery isolation are all here. Uh, we've got some levers here. DSD, horn, wiper. Not much here, of course. I thought the fire extinguisher used to do something with it, but I think it's just the door. Uh, just the seat height. I should do that in a second, because if I sit down, you'll notice it seems a bit high to me. I'm not entirely sure if this is accurate or if this guy is just incredibly tall. But nonetheless, I personally think it's a bit high. So what I was doing yesterday... Oh yeah, the seat's quite nice. Quite a nice sound to it, yeah. What I was doing, I was actually lowering it. Because I think this is a much more natural feeling position to drive in, to be honest. Uh, there are a couple more things on the back wall. AWS changeover. And isolate switch. AWS acknowledge. Uh, yesterday as, as well, I wasn't sitting here. I did it from up here. Let me isolate it again and see if it will if it'll do it. Right, okay. Do that. Do that. And it cancelled itself yesterday. It's obviously not going to do that today, but yeah, I I I, I isolated the the brakes, the AWS and all that, and the thing just like it's like oh hello, um okay, and just uh resets itself for some reason. Uh, mask key, reverser into forward, throttle. What we got there? Foot warmer. I couldn't actually find any functionality on them, but that's fair enough. Foot warmer. I don't think we need it on this nice autumn afternoon. Local brake off. Release over release charge. Whatever. Release overcharge. That's what I wanted to say. 
And apparently, some of the sound effects in this, I've been told, are Armstrong powerhouse sounds. So, we shall have a listen and see if we can identify anything. Uh, engine stop, engine start, cab light again from here, and instrument lights. I quite like the instrument lights, to be honest. There's your horn. And of course, we'll do some uh, external throttling in a little while. I don't, I don't think the horn's too bad on this, on this train. It's certainly got quite a nice sound to it. A bit too much clag, yes again, but that's train sim world for you. Oh, and I noticed the call animation on these blinds as well. If you look, the end of this is inside sort of that notch there. If you drop the blind, put it there, for example, it, well, okay, I thought, I thought, I thought it went sort of in pink back. It doesn't, but yeah. As you go down, it it uh, fits your blind into the different notches to obviously give you the position of the blind, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, it's not just sort of sprung loading and it does what it feels like. Let's get up to a bit more throttle. Full power is notch 10 down on the on the side, notch 5 up the top. So. Bit of confusion, but the game doesn't seem to rec the the game the HUD of the game doesn't seem to recognise the fact that there's um sort of steps. You see, it's got a point a um, decimal point to it there, whereas down the bottom it's just it's just sort of a notch system. So I think there's a bit of confusion between the the communication of the low code to the game. But nonetheless, you can sort of stick the throttle beyond um, notch three where you like. Right, let's do that. We have forty limit coming up. And as you can see, there is another class thirty-one over the other side of the station, which I'm sure you can guess. That is the one we are going to be mostly driving today. Right, I'm going to stop braking. The brakes on this thing are, are quite weird, actually. They seem to be a bit like the Class 6. Whereas in you put a... You sort of set it to a notch of braking. And it sort of just drops air at that rate sort of thing. I've not been able to get it to sort of stay constant on any particular kind of rate. We've oh, well overshot, haven't we, now? Okay, that wasn't what I intended. If I smack it to emergency, we fail the scenario that's really convenient for the plot of the video isn't it all right um i'll let you uh, do this scenario then we are going to try and jump into a service mode and we will have a look at the wagons let's see i wasn't expecting to do that for obvious reasons so we jump into the 31 uh that would do e what should we do burn run round. Reverse the train to the run round loop. Run round the train and push it back to salt burn ready to start the return journey. Hmm. That's the one. That's the end for this one then I'm guessing. We're going to jump into that and do a little bit of shunting. Because I don't think we've ever had a freight train in salt burn have we before? I don't think so. I'm not sure. Uh, right, okay. Let's jump out and assess the situation. And oh! Okay. Um... Yeah? Sure? Okay. Not quite what I had in mind, but yeah. Could be an interesting run, I guess. Kind of wanted to use the, uh... Can we drive this on? I wonder if we can drive that back, because I'm not going to be able to see anything from this, am I? Well, we got light wise. We've got no lights. Let's get some tails up in here. Yeah, tail lights. 
We're gonna try and reverse this unit from the cab. See if the game will let us. Right, um, reverser into forward. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna do this. Um, because, of course, we won't be driving the 31. Uh, and we won't have the cement wagon. So we'll just jump straight into a, uh, into a service. St. Tom table. We'll do this one. We'll do the... Where's it gone? It's move! Oi! Game, don't move my blooming trains around, please. That's not nice. Darlington to Tees Yard. Okay, that's the run we would have done within the scenario. So we'll do that run. Well, we would have obviously stopped at Darlington... And then we would have changed over, crossed to the other platform, in order to do the run back to um, T's Yard for the cement. So, we're not starting in the platform. Oh no, hang on. We're starting over this side of the station. This side of the station has bad memories, but whatever. We're going to, before we go anywhere though, uh, we're going to run down the side of the wagons and take a look at them. Start down the bottom. That's okay, that's, that's quite nice. I'm not really sort of... I didn't really get to have a proper stationary look at the wagon. So, this should be alright. Anything you can play with. That'd be cool if you could empty it. Open or close. Nah. That'd be cool if you could. Though. You can do the handbrake. <laughs> As you would expect applied where's the brake where is the brake is this i'm assuming that's what the brake is. is it moving it's hissing which it shouldn't be because it's a handbrake but okay i couldn't see any physical movement of the brake but whatever we we're gonna run down the train quickly take a look at the other end and see if we have a tail lamp which should do should fall in with the tail lamp i reckon With 11 miles to the yard. So yeah, that should be, should be a decent one then. Anything? Anything here? Uh, there's nothing here. You can't put anything on it either. That's a shame. It's a shame it's so... Let's turn our light on actually. Let's have a look. Very basic buffer beam. Nice rusty coupling. Uh, chain, which is quite nice. Alright, yeah, fair enough. Nice pipe up there. Logo. Nice bit of weathering going on as well. You can't actually climb these things. Uh, even if you're on the platform, you can't climb up. There's some some kind of instruction. No, I don't. Uh, there's some kind of instruction here. I'm assuming that's unloading it or something. I quite like them. That's a very big number, but... Yeah, I know. I quite like them. Uh, the weathering is very nice on them. They've, I love how the transfers are sort of all... Not as, not as great as they once were, probably. They're, they've all sort of faded and cracked and bits have been moved off them and what have you. So, yeah, I quite like these. I think these are actually a very successful uh, successful product, to be honest. Visually, uh, let's have a proper go with how it drives now, then, shall we? I like the ticking. Fire exit. Oh, I'm assuming that's the fire exit, obviously. We'll run around. We jump in there. Uh, we want our headlights. We don't want the cab light. We want our... A... Double S. Oh yeah, we want to lower the seat as well, don't we? Lower the seat. Uh, windows, of course, open. As you've seen, the doors open. Uh, blinds work, yada yada yada. We've all been through all this. Let's get some instrument lights on. We don't need the cab light. Key in. Reverser to forward. Brakes to release overcharge. Wait for some brake release to occur. Line B. Cool, thank you. <coughs> Let's, let's, let's have a listen from out here. I love the way that Train Sim World actually maps sounds, though. Well, that is something that's very good. 
No, look, you can hear that. I think that's the compressor. Probably. But you can't hear it as much. Oh, uh, and before we move anywhere, actually, let's apply the handbrake. So that we don't end up rolling. That'll do. That'll do for the second. I just want to show you the other cab, because the other cab is different. Slightly. We have some isolation switches. Control circuit with DSC on. Control switch on. Control switch. Engine breaker. There's, there's a few things you can play about with in there. Control circuit breaker. DSD. Air is all on. Good. That is good. Get it? Right. Okay. Uh, up here. Close that. Handbrake off. Because I ain't doing that stupid air brake again. Right, okay, we have the DSD on now. That's probably what the hissing was about then, because it was leaking air, obviously. Right, oh yeah, we wanted to do a... Compressor shut off. Okay. Not bad. Pretty nice. Hundred twenty five. Yeah, let's do hundred and twenty five, shall we? That's definitely gonna go well going around the curve. That's quite nice. I quite like that, actually. I wasn't too impressed with the initial sort of start-up downs, but that, that, the, the thrash is quite nice, actually. We'll let it coast along for a second. Um, we'll try and keep the speed limits. I meant, managed to spad yesterday when I was recording a video, but it was later on. I was more careful when I pulled into, um, into thingy, into Darlington. Uh, what? What? Okay. Okay, game. Thanks for that. I was only watching it go up and down, and that occurs. This game works in mysterious ways. Oh, wait. The chain actually went tight. The chain actually went tall. Let me shut that down. Hang on. If I do the loco break... <gasps> oh, no. That's, that's, that's monumentous, that, for this game. I've never seen that before. They usually just stiff couplings. Hang on, I need to try this with Wang C. Look, there's not really a lot of movement in the cup. But let's stick a bit of loco break. And then they move, they buffer up a little bit, but there's no, there's not really any movement in the actual, in the actual cup. have a main line but not a train line connected. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I think this uh, no, not the work jump is this table here, I believe. That to that, I think is the multiple work jump on. It's a shame that they're not moving them out of it. Obviously, we've still got Trains in World dodgy um, blur motion effect, but I quite like the motion effect. But yeah, no, uh, it's marketed as a Dash 1, and so far, this is the only Dash 1 I've actually seen. The rest have been 2s and 3s. I think it's quite funny, really. What do you make of the haul? I'm not entirely sure. I don't think it's the worst haul we've had in Trains in the World. It doesn't make, it doesn't make you question it. But it's not, um, it's, it's something sounds off with you. And I hope you can hear me over this. Let's go and listen to the wagon, shall we? I know we're coming out to speak, so. Let's have so quite a lot of them as well, to be honest. I do quite like the wagons. I don't know if maybe they get old from Powerhouse to, uh, help with the sound effects of the well, but... They've certainly put a lot more thought into the rolling stock. 
The only other thing I would like to see in this game is working suspension. I can see why it is a thing. Uh, the, the, the wagons, I mean, do rock and roll and they do move them out of it. I like there is a simulator. But there isn't actually any physical suspension simulator. Like I, like I say, I can understand why. Because really, it's going to take a lot more polygons. Which is going to take a lot more CPU. And you're not going to see it that often anyway. So really, it's not particularly a great thing. I do love, like I've said before, I do love the way that most of the brakes actually do function. Let's see if we can find the brake on here. That, that's the brake. Oh, I found the brake, finally. Right, let's put some logo brake on and see if it... Did it move? I didn't notice. I didn't see it. Let's put some service brake on. Moving? I'm not sure. To be you can hear the brake. I can definitely hear the brake. Trying to get the brake. I don't think the brake shoes are actually moving. Maybe it's because they're not exposed enough. These you just sort of thought, yeah, it's not really worth it. Really. Mm. Worth it really. I hate the pawns on N Rob B as well. And we ended up up here. Thanks, game. Much appreciated. I'm actually doing alright driving this thing today, apart from the spad, but you know, you never saw that. I was terrible with this thing yesterday, the brakes, but actually, it's alright. This, I think this is going to be a train that you're really going to have to get used to. Which is nice. I do like it when you have to learn a train. Because it's all realistic. It makes you want to come back and drive it. And perfect the way you drive. So it's it's really nice to actually have to... Um, learn a train. Oh yeah, and you can also do the manual wipers. Because why would you not want to do this, eh? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my table is wobbling like mad because of me ferociously moving the stupid wiper. Let's run the wipers. Shut up, messenger. They sound alright, see? I know obviously I shouldn't be using the park. Uh, park, sure. Is it all the way up? There we go. You can do, you, that's the good thing about a manual wiper. You can do that. I do like that horn, actually. I do actually like that horn. Get out, messenger! You're not helping! Uh, let's... Shove that down. Shove that down. Oh, and I also love the fact that when you don't have the blind down, you've got such a wide angle of vision. You can literally see all the way around you. Sort of thing. So... That was probably why the... Oh, it doesn't do it. I just love it. You gotta love that. <laughs> Good job, Train Sim World. Good job. You can sound effects. Throw it up to a uh, full throttle. Get speed on. And apologies if you're now feeling dizzy after that. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I guess the next thing to talk about then. Oh, yeah, we got DSP. I'm guessing if we stand up now, the emergency brakes are going to come on. So I'm not going to try that, just in case. Um, I guess, yeah, I guess the next thing we should talk about is probably the pricing of this thing. So, this pro this loco and the wagons are priced at 12 .99, well, 11 99 as you would expect of a DCG product. Is it worth that price? Yeah. Yeah, I actually think it is worth that price, to be honest. I, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed driving it, of what I have driven it. Again, it's... I've never actually seen that aeroplane there. I've never seen that before. How long has that been a thing? Well, since the route probably was built, but you know. I've seen the airport, sure. But I've never seen the aeroplane there. I love how this, how this track here goes right beside the road. It looks so cool.
Um, but yeah, no, I do think that this loco and the wagons are actually worth it. I'm really enjoying this, this driving. And it, it just looks so nice as well. Like I say, you, you're going to have to moss this thing. So you're not going to sort of drive it once and think, yeah, okay, that, that, that was fun. What's the next challenge? I mean, Tees Valley, as we, as you should all know, is my favourite, um, is my favourite train to world route. So naturally, anything for it is going to be amazing. Oh, well, it's going to sort of, it's going to tick my, tick the right boxes for me because Tees Valley, it, it's a really nice route. I do, I do think it is my favourite route of the train sim world collection which of course is very very sparsely populated really at the moment we have a lot of br br blue stuff and it would be nice if we got some more modern stuff apparently they're having licensing issues with some of the modern tox which is why we've not seen a load of uh a load of sort of modern period stuff it's all been heritage but hopefully all sort of heritage of course, the technically the um, West Somerset Railway is a modern route, but of course it's not got any sort of modern branding. It was all heritage branding, which they could easily get from the ORR anyway. I think it's the ORR that owns all the branding for BR, isn't it? Or the Board of o Railway Operations, or something like that. It, 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 either way, it's sort of it's it's an easy sort of contract to acquire by the family thing get licensing for British Railways Blue with double arrow. So naturally it sort of makes economic sense for DTG as a company to go for whatever's cheapest and easiest to um to, to sort of acquire. You know, they wanna they wanna collect they wanna build up a collection of stock to get an idea. I've never seen that shunt signal before. Ah oh. Oh, did you see that? There was there was the signal with a white sort of um, strip through it with the two red C at the top and the bottom. And that was a shunt signal. That's awesome. I've never seen that before. Never seen that. <laughs> yeah, no, naturally they obviously want to build up a collection of roots and stock and all that before they sort of start investing thousands of pounds into this game. If this game isn't going to be successful, there's no point in investing in a, a severe amount of money into it. But now that they know, now that they know sort of people are going to buy the DLC, because I know I'll buy it, that's just me. Obviously, there's a lot of people who don't really like the game. I'm half and half. I reckon if there was more to do, and they release it to the third party, we can have a pretty good game here. While it's kept in-house with DTG, I not convinced that the game is reaching its full potential. We could certainly have sort of better physics and sound effects and all that kind of stuff from the game. I mean, look, look how fast this is this is breaking. I have got no idea again. I have no idea how fast these things are breaking in real life. But a lot of the stuff sort of feels a bit heavy. If you're thinking that I've got I'm supposedly got a loaded cement train behind me. I know each wagon is fitted, but there's sort of there's sort of boundaries, you know. If I've got a loaded freight train, you'd expect it to sort of glide a bit further, almost. I don't know. Maybe maybe it maybe it, just, uh, maybe it doesn't. I've got a lot of I had a lot of braking force there, so maybe that was correct. But yeah, I reckon, because well, I reckon the third party would be more inclined to build all this. Like on the first first train in world thing we got, the there was it the GB forty eight dash two or whatever they want to call it in America. You know, you could open the fuse cabinet, you could you could literally flick practically every single fuse in that cupboard. There weren't many that you couldn't play about with. You could open the engine room, sort of halfway down the loco, and start the en and prime the engine, and then start the engine manually. And that's what this game was supposed to be. It was supposed to be an in-depth 
simulation of the train. And it's sort of becoming a bit more of a game than a simulation. Because of the fact that we can't do certain bits. It's being very held back. Plus it's also being very held back by the console. Because they have to... They have to design route for the in world so that both PC and console can run it. And console has, a, in general, has an awful lot less less sort of specification than a PC. So they are restricting sort of the length of the routes, the quality of the routes, all of that stuff they can do by the console. Because when they went to uh, port CSX Heavy Hall over, they found they couldn't do it because it was too big. The console couldn't take it. So why should the PC players have who the game was initially designed for, pretty much, have to miss out because the console is holding it back? You know, the, en the game engine and the game were designed to run with 100, 200, 300 mile route. You're supposed to be able to do an entire journey from London to Penzance or Aberdeen or somewhere sort of thing. Let's give us that opportunity. I know it's going to take years to build a route of that scale and to a good quality that trains in world should be. But then you sort of start, you know, the sooner you start, the sooner you finish something. I, I slowed down that much because I thought there was a 15 coming up as well. I thought there was a 15 limit. I, they must be further along. So I do think that they need to do a lot more with this game to sort of try and bring it up to scratch. But, having said that, going back to the Class 31, I like that road, by the way. <laughs> that was actually pretty... That is, that is pretty. That is... Dirt road stop. I like the dirt road though. Correctly, I like the dirt, the dirt road. Yeah, um... But yeah. So... <coughs> uh, sorry I'm coughing. Uh, Rope's drying out a bit, I guess. But yeah, give us some of them features. And I reckon we could be on to a winner with this game. As far as the 31 itself is concerned, yeah, I love it. I, I genuinely love it. Maybe the horn could be mapped, the sound effects on the horn could be mapped a bit better. Um, but possibly some of the sections could be higher dense, higher quality. I don't know. The, the maximum is probably 4K. They're probably using 4K textures already on these things, so... You know, we have a red anyway, so... Let's start breaking that because this was this red up here, the red coming up was the one I uh, spadded yesterday. So twenty limit, yeah. I don't know where the signal is either because I don't have the uh, the prompt on the marker, nor do I want it on. So I want to try and do this as best as possible. Is that a green or is that a yellow? Where's the cube? That is a red. Oh, it's got a shunt though. I'm just going to contact the signal though, just in case. Restricted speed. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Yeah. I mean, we may have a bit of wheel slip, but. Hey, look, there you go. Wheel slip light. Let's throttle off. Let's give it a bit more power. Come on, brakes. Come on, brakes. See what I mean by it takes a while for the brakes to release. You've got to sort of learn how to how to drive it effectively. We got permission from the signal pl signaler. Plus, that is a um a shunt, <coughs> which is lit there. So this is obviously the uh the yard. I can't help I can't help but feel that maybe two locos on this train is slightly overpowered because it's it's pulling pretty well. So maybe one would have been enough, but maybe that isn't strong enough. Who knows? But yeah, eleven ninety nine. You can't go wrong, really. It's 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 actually a really nice drive. 
I mean, I think in sort of in sort of general, some of the locos for this game are maybe a bit much money, especially considering the fact they are always confined to one route. However, with the service mode, you then don't have to wait for people to build scenarios so that you can get the most out of your out of your stock. It's all there, out the box, ready to play. And that's what you want from from buying a product, really. You want stuff to be able to do, to use it properly. So it's a full advantage of me. So it's fullest. Whatever I'm trying to say. You know what I'm trying to say. Uh, I thought that was a red. I'm just trying to bring it down to speed, though. So. The break, the loco break releases an awful lot quicker than the train break, as you would expect. Because obviously you've got to release it from every single loco, single wagon from from back there. But with the loco break, it's just the loco. Is that building a band? That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Fair enough. There's not a hump shunt here, is there? Was there a hump shunt here? Well, they're all in the middle. It looks like one. Of, it looks like the yard there. There was one. I can't remember if there was one at Teesside or not. I'm sure somebody will moan at me. There was one, or there wasn't one, but I can't remember. I can't remember. It looks like the yard. Uh, it's not Tinsley. I'm sure because there were other ones. There were. There wasn't just Tinsley. I might be just sort of thinking it looks like Tinsley. I'm quite possibly am. I'm gonna leave a bit of loco break on so that we can control the speed. Take it off, because it looked like we were rolling, so maybe there was a downhill, but, oh no, it's one in infinity now. I don't know what the back of the train's doing, of course, that's just what the loco's doing. Nice looking map, okay. Pretty decent looking yard. Gonna slowly coast along to the end of this rather long siding. Lights the back of the train. Now we put the lights on. Was there a tail lamp in the back? There still wasn't a tail lamp. Bit of so well. Pipes moving out a bit. Oh, that was one. That's that's the other thing. I still don't. I'm still not convinced that pipes move about that much. To be honest. Um. Like, some of them are really loose, the older ones, and some of the new ones are really stiff. So, who knows whether they do move them out. I need to sort of somehow find a way to watch them, to watch the pipe move them out, see if it really does. That's weird. My game did something. Or rather. Still recording, so it didn't stop the recording. <laughs> that would be a disaster if it stopped the recording because of that. Right, we are approaching. We are approaching our stopping point. Let's get some loco brake going. Try and glide us in nicely. Oh, this is actually working. I oh, didn't think that would work, but that's actually a decent sort of stopping method. I thought it would be way too weak, unless somehow it's actually affecting the train brake rather than just the loco brake. It, the game may be confused, possibly. Right, let's slap the objective complete. Uh, continue. Continue. What do? Return to free roam. We want to slap it into emergency. There's a bit of a shutdown procedure for this. Off. Off. Uh, that goes into. We'll leave that in 100%. Shut down. We may actually need to do some shunting with these. Let's do that, do that. And that is pretty much the shutdown procedure. Uh, of course, you can actually shut down the loco. I've not learned the shutdown procedure. There's maybe a tutorial. There may not be. I don't know. Uncoupled vehicles. Manual uncoupled. <clears throat> Objective complete. Stop at location. Uh, is it up ahead? Okay, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do this and then I'll, we'll, we'll pull away from the wagons, we'll leave the wagons here and then we'll, uh, I want that on still, don't I? No, that was off, turn that on, off, sorry, that on, that off, do that, we need the AWS, I don't think you 
can move them in real life without AWS, can you? Um, do that. Master key in. Reverser into forward. Brake into release. Oh, loco brake into release as well. We might as well just use the loco brake now because it will be a lot more efficient. Um, uh, sort of doing the brakes. Wheeler, uh, that's what I wanted to do. Train brake. Release overcharge. June 88. Is that when it was installed? I'm guessing so. Or maybe it's when it needs to be taken out and inspected. Who knows? Who knows? Do a little toot before we move off. Yeah, I'm on. Yeah, I'm on. There we go. Lovely. And we have left our wagons behind. See you later, wagons. Have a good day. As long as the points are set, of course. I'm assuming there would be. I've got no mar markers on the track, so I'm just going to have to use the stop at location distance to work out roughly where we are, where we are stopping. Roll off. Crossing. Oh, these are all um, motorized points now. Cool. Are we coupling up to something? Is that what's happening? Oh, look, wheels. Oh, nice. Wheels there. Or are we just stabling these? I would assume we're just stabling. But this looks like a... I don't know, to be honest. We're getting close anyway, so we're going to start breaking a bit. This is a weird place to leave the... To leave the, uh, the locos, but... Oh, are we supposed to go down there? Warning loco reversing and all that. Oh. Yeah, flange squirrel. Okay. A bit abrupt stop, but... Right. Forwards. Uh, oh, I want to be in there, don't I? We want to jump out. Throw the point, as I think this is what it wants us to do. And if this, is, if this uh, leads on to a scenario where you drive... Where you take the hoppers, and that'd be quite annoying. That'd be a nice little scenario. And I might do that once I've finished the video. Let's pull forward. So yeah, overall though, what do I think? I think this tra this loco is actually really worth the price. I love this thing. I I, I genuine. Okay, that's not where we're going. Oh, you know what? We just we just we just leave it here then. It, it, that, the sidings are the same, right? I mean, we may be blocking a, a loco that needs to come along and take these wagons later, but you know, doesn't matter, does it? Emergency, off, key out, shut down, break around the full, uh, AWS, AWS. Oh, we should have put the tail lights on the other end as well, shouldn't we? Right, let's jump out, grab the tail lights. Stable the locos here. Actually, can we shut it down? I wonder. Can we shut them down? Tail lights, tail lights, and that is good, isn't it? Well played. Nice. Quickly, we will quickly. We've got to start it up. Obviously. Obviously, you can't not start it. Ready? Assuming it wants to start like this, of course. I may be missing a step. Everything should be cut in, so...
I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave that there then, as we can't start it. Thank you very much for watching this video. That only shut down one. I was supposed to shut down both. Oh, well. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and hopefully there'll be another video along soon. So thank you very much, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.